Hi everyone, this is lesson number 22 from Actuarial Path on Probability. And in this lesson we study the uniform distribution. If we have a random variable x that follow a uniform distribution, so x follows a uniform distribution with parameters a and b. Here a and b are the lower and the upper limits of the values that the random variable x can take. And a uniform random variable is equally likely to take any value between its lower limit and its upper limit. To explain that, I'm going to draw this graph. Okay, let's say that's x, and then that's the PDF of x. You said that the random variable x takes the value between a and b. Since it's equally likely to take any value between A and B, it, it has a flat PDF. So the PDF is flat. In other words, it's a constant function. Okay? But we know that the area under the PDF is always equal to 1, so that we have a valid probability density function. So that means the area of this rectangle here should be equal to 1. But we know area is the base times the height. So we can calculate the length of that height that we need so that the area under this curve, the area of the rectangle, is equal to 1. This base of the rectangle has a length of b minus a. Therefore, b minus a times the height should give us an area equal to 1, which implies that h should be equal to 1 over b minus a. So the value taken by the PDF of a uniform distribution from the lower limit a to the upper limit b is 1 over b minus a. In other words, this is the PDF. The PDF of random variable that follows a uniform distribution a to b is equal to 1 over b minus a. For values of x between A and B. Now that we have the PDF, we're going to derive the CDF, f of x. Let me actually write it. So the CDF is going to be, I'll show you how to get that, 0 if x is less than A, and it's equal to x minus A divided by B minus A. If x is between A and B, it's 1 if x is greater than b. So that's the CDF. And we also uh, show that the expected value is b plus a over 2, or a plus b over 2. That's actually the midpoint. So since, since the PDF is flat and constant, the expected value is going to be right at the middle of the lower, between the lower limit and the upper limit which is a plus b over 2 or b plus a over 2. And the variance of the random variable x is going to be equal to b minus a quantity squared divided by 12. And finally, the MGF, the moment generating function of a uniform random variable, is equal to e to the b times t minus e to the a times t divided by b minus a times t. So the rest of this lesson is going to be showing you how to get this uh, CDF expected value variance and moment generating function. Let's find the CDF. Okay. The CDF of random variable x is equal to the probability that the random variable x takes a value less than or equal to little x. Let me actually draw that picture again so that I can explain things better. So we have A here, B, the uniform distribution takes any value between A and B, equally likely, and height or the density function has a value equal to 1 over B minus A. So the CDF, so when when the value of x is less than the lower limit a, then the CDF is equal to zero. The reason for that is 
there's no chance that the random variable x can take value less than little x if little x is less than a. That is because x cannot take values less than a. Okay, so that's equal to zero. So when x is between a and b, and x is between a and b, then the CDF is the integral, integral from negative infinity to x of the PDF, f of x dx. But the PDF cannot take any value less than a, so instead of starting from negative infinity, I can set the lower limit of this integral to be a, so that, so that I have integral from a to x of f of x dx, but f of x is 1 over b minus a for values of x between a and b. Okay, so this is 1 over b minus a du. Now, this integral is equal to u divided by b minus a, lower limit a, upper limit x. When you plug in the upper limit and the lower limit, you get x divided by b minus a minus a divided by b minus a. And that is equal to x minus a divided by b minus a. So that's the CDF for values of x between a and b. It turns out the CDF, what's the CDF at x is equal to b? The CDF at x equal to b as f of x of b, plug in b in this equation, then you have b minus a divided by b minus a, that's equal to 1. Alright, with that in mind, we can actually just write the CDF when x is greater than b. When x is greater than b, the CDF is equal to 1. f of x is equal to 1. Alright, I could have actually found this CDF in a much easier way than the way I did with integrals. If this is the point x, the probability that the random variable x takes a value less than or equal to little x is equal to the area of that rectangle. Okay? We really didn't need to do the integral. And if you calculate the area of that rectangle, the base has a value of x minus a, multiplied by the height, which is 1 over b minus a, that gives you x minus a divided by b minus a. The expected value of the random variable x is the integral over all the support of the random variable x. So let's say the support of x is script x of x times f of x dx. We know actually the support is from a to b, any value from the lower limit to the upper limit. x times f of x is 1 over b minus a dx. 1 over b minus a is a constant with respect to x, so I can take it outside of the integral, and I have the integral a to b of x dx. And that's equal to 1 over b minus a times x squared, all right? divided by 2, the lower limit a, the upper limit b. Plug in the lower limit and the upper limit here, you would find out this is equal to 1 over b minus a multiplied by b squared minus a squared divided by 2. b squared minus a squared is the difference of two squares, which I can rewrite as the difference of two squares can be written as b minus a times b plus a. And then I have divided by 2. So b minus a cancels out with b minus a. Therefore, I am left with b plus a over 2. The variance of the random variable x is the second moment minus the first moment square. But we know the first moment first moment is b plus a over 2. So we can just find the second moment and then use the first moment that we have here 
to calculate the variance. The second moment is the integral from a to b, in this case, of x squared f of x dx. And that is equal to the integral a to b x squared 1 over b minus a dx. Again, 1 over b minus a is a constant with respect to x, so that can be outside of the integral, the integral from a to b x squared dx. That is equal to 1 divided by b minus a multiplied by x cubed divided by 3 evaluated from the lower limit a to the upper limit b. This is b minus a multiplied by if you plug in the upper limit and the lower limit you get b to the power of 3 minus a cubed divided by 3. b cubed minus a cubed that's the difference of two cubes difference of two cubes can be written as b minus a, revise that from your algebra if you don't remember, b minus a times b square plus ab plus a square divided by 3. Here again b minus a here cancels out with b minus a up here, therefore we are left with b square plus a times b plus a squared divided by 3. And that's the second moment. To find the variance, I need to subtract I need, I need to subtract the first moment squared from the second moment. So the second moment is b squared times a b plus a b plus a square divided by 3 minus the square of the first moment. The first moment is b plus a divided by 2. So this is b squared plus a times b plus a squared minus, let's square this, that's going to be b squared plus 2ab plus a squared, so divided by 4. This common factor is 12. 12 by 3 is 4, so we have 4 times b squared plus a times b plus a squared minus 12 divided by 4 is 3, so 3 times b squared plus 2ab plus b squared. I'm sorry, a squared. So that is equal to 4b squared plus 4 times ab plus 4a squared minus 3b squared minus 6 times ab minus 3a squared, whole quantity divided by 12. Again, 4b squared minus 3b squared is b squared. 4ab minus 6ab is minus 2ab. 4a squared minus 3a squared is plus a squared divided by 12. Okay, b squared minus 2ab plus b squared is b minus a quantity square and divide by 12. And that's the variance of the random variable x which follows a uniform distribution between the upper between the lower limit a and the upper limit b. So we found the CDF, the expected value, the variance. We're gonna go ahead and find the moment generating function. The MGF mx of t is the expected value of e to the power of t times x and that is equal to the integral over all the support of the random variable x which is from a to b and of e to the tx times f of x dx but f of x is 1 over b minus a dx and that is equal to I can again take b minus a 1 over b minus a outside of the integral that multiplied by integral a to b of e to the tx dx. That is equal to 1 divided by b minus a multiplied by, let me put this in parentheses, e to the tx divided by t, lower limit a, upper limit b. That's equal to b minus a, 1 over b minus a multiplied by e to the t times b minus 
e to the t times a divided by t. So when you rewrite this, you will find out that the MGF is e to the t times b minus e to the t times a divided by b minus a times t. And that's the MGF of a uniform random variable.